Paduka Swayambo has been an IT communication network professional since 1995 and transitioned into a researcher and environmentalist in 2011. He is also an ecologist, inventor, entrepreneur, biodiversity conservationist, water hero, TED speaker, and recognized as a global top three author on Water by Smart Water magazine in Spain. He has represented India at various international forums as well. What we are going to talk about in this presentation is uh, entrepreneurship in water, or what we call as waterpreneurship. And there is a lot of entrepreneurial opportunity into water. And for that, uh, we should be understanding water uh, very well. So let me just uh, jump into the presentation. What we'll try to understand is uh, about water. Water is one of the key ingredients that we look into all the space explorations whenever we are looking at any of the celestial bodies. What we first try to understand is whether there is water or not, because water is the key possibility of life. The same is applicable uh, to any celestial body. The same is applicable to our own home planet, that is Earth. right? So H2O is the key resource for life and where, wherever there is water, there is a possibility of life. And if we understand water, uh, hydrogen as well as oxygen, both of them are combustible. But when they combine together, it becomes an extinguisher, right? Uh, then one more typical uh, aspect about water is all the substance on the planet will expand when heated and it will contract when frozen. Water is the only substance which will expand when frozen, right? So it is actually defining the laws of physics. It is the most abundant uh, element, so to say, uh, on the face of the planet, because 73% of the planet is uh, water. Apart from that, we have moisture in soil so that seeds can germinate. Apart from that, we have moisture in air so that all the terrestrial animals can breathe, right? So water is surely the most abundant substance, if we call it a substance, on the entire planet. And it is required for all life forms, whether it is a plant seed which has to be germinated into the soil or whether it is into the air for all the terrestrial organisms to breathe or water in itself is water, whether it is ice or whether it is glacier or uh, whether it is the polar ice, everywhere water is there. And that is why we find water everywhere across the planet. That is why we are always searching for water in all the space explorations as well. So let us understand some basics of science and commerce about water. Water exists in uh, liquid or solid and gas. And water has a force working against uh, the gravity, which is uh, the buoyant force. That is what pushes you out of water when you fall into the water. Uh, then uh, the way water moves, like every every living organism has got a, a, a unique uh, way of walking. Water also has got a unique way of propagation, which is the spiral uh, way of movement. Viral, uh, water always moves in a spiral motion. It doesn't flow straight. Right. Uh, then there, there is uh, a lot of experimentation done in memory of water and this uh, stimuli of water against uh, the environment. Uh, water can listen, it can record, it can communicate, it can memorize and translate. And all that has been done uh, in various experiments across the globe. Uh, some of it has happened in France, some of it has happened in US, some of it has happened in uh, uh, Japan. So everywhere people have experimented with water and they have understood various different aspects of uh, water through uh, the experiments. Now from water, if we come to the water bodies, water bodies are basically the conjunction point of soil, water and air. Right. So if we want to understand why were landlocked water bodies created, if 73% of the globe was as it is water, 
So what was the need for the water bodies? And the key need for the water bodies is basically the, the life which began into the marine ecosystem eventually propagated to land. So when it propagated to land, uh, there was a different ecosystem requirement for the terrestrial life to dwell. That is why landlocked water bodies were created, which were the conjunction point of soil, water, and air. Now, once all these three media in which single celled organisms can survive, they combine together, they create the biggest pool of native microbiota into the water bodies. That is why there is, an, in this conjunction point, there is an exchange which happens between water and air, between water and soil, soil and underground water, which we call as groundwater or the aquifer. And these exchanges will actually result into the ecosystem services that any landlocked water bodies provides to the vicinity, right? That is where the ecosystem services from the water bodies uh, come into the picture. And uh, the end resultant is, uh, as human beings, there, there are a lot of economical activities which can be uh, created out of uh, these exchanges. So if you look at uh, the Indian government focus, government of India, the central government, the federal government has actually understood that there is no development possible without availability of water. So that is why government of India is spending $240 billion annually. This, this uh, figure has come from an Indian think tank, which we call as uh, Center for Environment, Energy and Water. Um, that is CEEW, which has done an in-depth analysis of where all government of India is spending money. And they have understood that there are so many central government schemes uh, like Atal Bhujan Yojana is only for groundwater. Mission Amrit Sarovar is only for the water bodies. Uh, PMMSY is for fisheries only. Hargar Nazar Yojana is uh, for providing tap water to each and every home in India. Then uh, Catch the Rain is uh, basically rainwater harvesting project. Amrut 2.0 is Atal Mission for Rejuvenation and Urban Transformation, which is for the urban water bodies. More crop per drop is again water saving approach uh, for agriculture. Dam rehabilitation and improvement project, the drip project is only uh, from the water conservation into the dams, right? So there's so many projects ongoing across the country in which government of India is spending $240 billion only on through the water projects. So water is definitely surely one of the most important focus areas um, for government of India, for the federal government. And therefore, because of such high fund allocation to the sector, there are a lot of economic opportunities that get created. And that is what that is why we call about uh, the waterpreneurship. There is a huge amount of money which is available into this particular sector and the youth can actually take it as a career option. So if we look at the water economy, the water kingdom into economy, what do we find? We find that agriculture is completely dependent on water. Uh, whether uh, we talk about the cattle farms, uh, animal husbandry, piggery, poultry, any of the associated or the allied agriculture sectors, these are all dependent on water, right? Then we have industries. There is no single industry which can run without water. Every industry is a water guzzler and every industry is wasting huge amount of waters. In fact, uh, the water crisis that we have across the globe is primarily because of uh, the water being wasted by the industries and that water being dumped into the natural water bodies, right? So the surface water that we have is no more of any kind of usage for any life purposes, right? That is why we have accumulation of wastewater and the surface water bodies once get contaminated, they also impact the groundwater or the aquifer, right? So that is how water is required by everybody. And that is how um, rejuvenation of the water body in itself becomes a huge sector, right? 
Now we have a very big uh, sec, uh, I mean, uh, impact on the academia as well, because there is a huge industry because of water. There has to be a lot of research into water. And that is why academia is also equally uh, part of the aqua economy. Uh, then we have a legal uh, aspect also. Then we have a media aspect also, because there is a lot of uh, journalism which is happening on water, about water availability, whether it is water scarcity or water availability. All that data points are published by government. Uh, there is a lot of parallel research which is done uh, by the media professionals. There's a lot of research done by academia. And the legal aspect comes into the picture, like in India, in Bharat, we have National Green Tribunal. Now, this is a special court, which is for environment and environmental purposes. Then obviously, water becomes one of the key sectors there as well, right? Uh, biodiversity conservation is one of the SDGs. And uh, definitely, it has a big, big impact into the economy, whether it is agriculture, whether it is the cattle farms. Biodiversity is required uh, for all these sectors. Without bees and butterflies, the pollination will not happen. Without pollination, the agriculture yield will get impacted. Uh, so agriculture is definitely, surely uh, related to biodiversity. Uh, same goes true with uh, the tourism sector as well. Right. So all these things are actually linked to uh, the aqua economy directly or indirectly. And that is why Water Kingdom has a huge impact on the uh, economy. So if we look at the uh, Indian system, the, the human kingdom that we have, we, uh, we have a governing structure of the government. We have urban local bodies wherein we have municipal corporations, smart cities, uh, development authorities, or, or various kinds of board, whether it is a biodiversity board, or pollution control board, or groundwater okay. board, right? All of them have got an impact. Uh, similarly, we have uh, uh, district magistrate, we have uh, chief development officer, we have block development officer, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, a public sector undertaking, nodal agencies, cooperatives, everybody has got a role to play and everybody owns a natural resource. Now, these natural resources are to be restored and that is where the money is, right? Same goes through with the townships and the campus, whether it is a PSU campus or a cantonment board, railway board, uh, metro railway, ports, even academia campus. Every campus has got a lot of natural resources out of which there will be natural water bodies as well. And all of them have got an impact. The economic impact is when it comes to the restoration of the water bodies and providing the ecosystem services from the water bodies, right? So if you look at uh, the economy of the sector, the, the impact that we have, the market size that we have, only in one country, that is India. Uh, when, uh, in 2019, we got the Jal Shakti Mantrale made for the first time, that is the Water Resources Ministry. And all water-related departments came uh, under this particular ministry. They were consolidated under this particular ministry. And uh, the, the first uh, official statement released uh, by the ministry, the new reformed ministry in 2019, was that 54% of the country was under acute water stress. And that is why there were the, so many uh, projects which were released. 22% of the aquifer had already been depleted. And that is why there were so many projects for groundwater restoration, which were created, right? Uh, now, these are uh, some of uh, the other numbers. All of them actually put together works out to be $240 billion. That is the uh, industry size for the water sector in India. Um, there are plenty of uh, Australian uh, water restoration companies which are also uh, operating in India these days because the market is huge, right? So there is a social impact, there is a economic impact, and there is a political impact, right? Society needs water, air, 
uh, and soil. I mean, soil is basically for growing the foods. So agriculture is linked to it. Economy is uh, purely dependent on the employment opportunities and the livelihood opportunities that you have across the country. All of them are internally also linked with water. And when it comes to politics, because water is the basic need for all life forms, it is in, in any democracy, it is uh, all the voters that matters. And every voter will need water, right? So water is directly linked to politics, economics, and society, right? So that makes water as one of the key components of any life or any human endeavor. That is why there are a lot of opportunities of waterpreneurship, uh, as explained in the previous slide, whether it is journalism, whether it is academia, whether it is research, uh, whether it is uh, industry or agriculture or animal farms, everything finally boils down to the availability of water. And that is where the economy runs. The four approaches which usually all the governments take, which is sewer treatment plant, rainwater harvesting, plantation drive, and water body desilting, which these are all uh, common approaches, but these are all not leading to recreation of water abundance. Uh, one of the case study that you have in front of you is uh, pre-restoration. Uh, water body was filled with water. Post-restoration, there is only body. Water is not there. Right. So this is a real time case study from uh, one of the states in uh, Bharat. That is usually the approach wherein we once we have to restore the water body, we first pump out all the water. We expose all the bottom sludge to the air and sunlight and we increase exorbitantly increase the greenhouse uh, emission from the water body. This is a wrong approach. The right approach should be that we make the water bodies healthy. Water bodies are not dirty that we are trying to clean them. Water bodies are sick. We need to restore them back to good health. So how do we do that? We do that by restoring the ecosystem services, which are mitigation, conservation, and maintenance. How can this be done? This can be done with nature-based solutions, right? So if we focus on nature-based solutions, all the solutions are possible. And the approach should be for restoration of ecosystem services, not to clean and beautify the water body because nothing is more beautiful than nature itself, 